If you missed the Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson fight yesterday, you, you didn't miss anything. This was, not only was it one of the worst fights, this was probably one of the biggest money grabs in boxing history. I'm not gonna play the video up here for obvious reasons, but if you saw Mike Tyson's walk off when the guy was interviewing him and the dude had his ass cheeks out, pause, before he went to go fight, that was a fight, bro. And I wish I could unsee that video. It caught me off guard. <laughs> now, the thing with the fight, too, the build up to the fight was straight. I'm not gonna lie. They did a great, they, I have whoever their marketing team is, they did a great job marketing the fight. I saw this trainer video on Mike Tyson. I was like, oh shit. You see trainer vids like that, you're like, oh, so and so is about to go in. You know the equivalent to this? This is why you can never trust training videos. The equivalent to that is like Ben Simmons training in the offseason just for when the season starts and you guys see what happens. Post these offseason videos and then the season comes, it's the same thing. This fight, first of all, it was wrong on so many levels because you're fighting the out of prime Mike Tyson. Like, come on, bro. As far as the money aspect, he secured the bag. I think he got 40 million. Mike Tyson got 20 million. I think that was the fight in purse or something like that. You know, so I guess from that aspect, it's whatever. And I think I think Jake felt a little bad because of his tweets. Cause you know, usually he talks shit, right? He put out this tweet. He said who mocked him. He's a he's a effing beast. All respect to the baddest ever. It was an honor to share the ring with him. And then he tagged Mike Tyson. It still doesn't change the fact you just fought a, a 58 year old it's making the sport of boxing like a joke this is like the most obvious money grab i've ever seen who, do, who does this mid fight low key after seeing this video everyone should have known it was a money grab but like, look does this sound like a person that gives a damn about the fight like just listen to this right you return to the ring for this fight you are setting a monumental opportunity for kids my age to see the legend mike tyson in the ring for the first time so after such a successful career what type of legacy would you like to leave behind when it's all said and done well i don't know i don't believe in the word legacy i just think that's another word for ego Legacy doesn't mean nothing. That's just some word everybody grabbed on to. Someone said that word and everyone grabbed on the word, so now it's used every five seconds. It means absolutely nothing to me. I'm just passing through. I'm going to die, and it's going to be over. Who cares about legacy after that? What a, what a big ego. So I'm going to die. I want people to think that I'm this. I'm great. I'm No, we're nothing. We're just dead. I look her. She was, yo, look at her face. She was so excited to interview Mike Tyson. She was expecting some inter inspirational speech. Look at her face after he said that shit. He's like, well, damn, nigga, who hurt you? <laughs> Dust. Yeah, absolutely nothing. Our legacy is nothing. She's going to be a terrific reporter. She handled that really well. I have not heard before someone say that as an answer. Can you really imagine somebody say, I want my legacy to be this way when I, you're dead. Why do you want to you think somebody really wants to think about you? How, how, what's the that I think, I want people to think about me when I'm gone. Who the fuck cares about me when I'm gone? Well, my kids, maybe, or grandkids. Yeah, the true. Kids. And, and to be honest, that's how a lot of, you know, especially older people think. When you start talking, one, as you get older and as you talk to older people, that's how a lot of them think, you know? It's kind of, it's crazy. I mean, he's saying some real shit, but it's just like, damn, look how excited, look how, look how excited she was to talk to him. Everyone was so mad about this fight. Like, look, look what this dude said after, right? Man, tonight was what it was. I'm not shocked about it. You know, Mike is one of the all-time greats in selling a fight and making you believe. And he did that tonight, you know, but at the same time, you can't lose sight of the fact that man could be in. But I'm not disappointed about it because as a 58-year-old man that got himself whipped himself in that kind of shape to come in here and at least stand in front of this dude and, and exchange punches. You know, that's a win in and of itself. Some people really believe Mike was going to just teleport back into time and, and, and be young Mike. It just don't work like that, man. So, you know, I hope y'all ain't too disappointed about the fight. I'm more relieved that Mike didn't get caught with nothing. He had a couple moments where he landed, not clean. So that was exciting. And, uh, you know, Jake did what he did, man. But it's time for Jake to fight somebody a lot younger than Mike Tyson. A lot more accomplished. Somebody that's going to give him what he's been looking for, which is legitimacy. It's time for him to do that. This is what Jake said after the fight. At any point, did you start to take your foot off the gas just a little bit because you knew he was tiring out? Yeah, definitely. Definitely a bit. You know, I wanted to give the fans a show, but I didn't want to hurt someone that didn't need to be hurt. He just kind of confirmed it was a money grab. And then, too, he felt, you could tell he felt kind of bad about fighting mike tyson at the age he was at you know it was for money they both made their bread i guess did you feel mike's power at all no 
If he hit you with one and you gave him the tongue. I only because the crowd like got turned up, but it didn't actually hurt. But I mean, no one's punches have like really hurt. I, I got buzzed a little bit against Tommy Fury, but that's about it. I'm gonna play the clip in a sec where he called out Javante, but Javante said to the bozo that shared the ring with Mike, you a whole bozo for this and you didn't get the job done. I low key wanna see them spar. Javante probably win. I think he called him out too. Let me see. I think this this is his reaction to it. That he would beat the brakes off of you if you guys fight. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'd be down. Let's run it. Like, I'd be super, super down. Javante, I don't know. Javante, I don't know if Javante needs Jake Paul. Let's be clear, right? Is there a is there a height limit in boxing? What about you and Conor McGregor? Are you interested in that? <laughs> yeah, he'll never do that though. He knows. He knows way, way. One, way. he's under contract. And he's two, he's not his own boss. And two, he he won't do it. He knows better. He might. He might. And it's say, funny to say, like, yo, Conor McGregor is scared of Jake Paul and will never box him, but it's it's the fucking truth. And look at him go toe to toe with Nate Diaz, who was easy work for me. It was like a Monday sparring session to beat Nate Diaz's ass. So he doesn't ever want the smoke with me. It won't ever happen. We believe Canelo would do a cruiserweight fight. There's no way Conor does a cruiserweight fight with Jake Paul. The dude really called out three different weight classes. That, that's hilarious. I think Francis called him out. He won't fight Francis. And then, you know, this on top of all the, you know, the Netflix wasn't even working correctly. Yeah, I don't know. It just wasn't. It just wasn't a good fight. But they got their, they got their bread. That's what they came for. You know, it's all it's all about bread, you know, with these people nowadays. So and the thing with boxing that I've always said I think people like, I like people like Ryan Garcia. I know like he has his wild shit going on. After somebody loses, that shouldn't be the end of their career. I think with somebody like Floyd Mayweather, draw to Floyd was he was undefeated. Like now in boxing, it feels it's either a money grab or if you lose, like your career is over, which I like how Ryan Garcia lost to Tank, but he's still, still out here like, yo, we still could fight. You know, it's whatever. He's still one of the most marketable uh, boxers. I know he's going to come back from his suspension soon, but now if you lose your career borderline over, he's kind of changing that, which is dope to me, you know. Besides all the other, you know, he be wilding sometimes, but I, I respect that aspect. Now, for this fight, bro, you just can't respect this. I just feel like it's disrespectful to the sport because, you know, making more money than the people who dedicate their whole life to being the best boxer they can. I'm all for influencers changing the game and doing whatever, but... I just can't, I don't know, just disrespecting someone's craft like this. You are you know, one, he's making more money than a majority of the boxers, like I just said. If you're going to do it, at least fight someone legitimate. Like, you saw when he fought Tommy Fury, saw what happened. You know, like, he needs to, like, fight somebody legitimate within your weight class. Make it respectable, at least. Not a, a old... Mike Tyson, uh, uh, oh, you know, like make it respectable, you know, terrible fight. I wish I can get that time back, wasting my time, but it's all good. Let me know your thoughts on that in the comment section. And as always, it's your boy.